Well, uh, I think the biggest issue facing us right now is uh, aquatic invasive species. I mean, we've got we've got uh, all these things all around us. From the south, there's a plant down there called giant salvinia. It's an algae uh, or aquatic macrophyte, and it uh, doubles in in uh, its its growth or amount doubles in numbers every week. Um, Louisiana, it's close to our border, and 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 the biologists in Louisiana that used to do fish sampling, fish work, fish management, all they're doing is fighting this algae because it, it's uh, or this aquatic plant. It it, uh, it stacks up, it shades out all the water underneath it, and uh, you can't motor through it, you can't fish in it, and it completely covers their lakes. There's a uh, there's a uh, an algae called golden algae to the southwest of us that when it builds up to certain numbers and has a die off it, it emits a toxin i think it came from the middle east it, it emits a toxin that'll kill every fish uh i think uh, dr engel talked about the vhs that her uh, school has been working on it's viral uh, hemorrhagic septicemia that is coming from the northeast. It's in the Mississippi River. It's headed our direction. So um, there's uh, then the snakeheads. There's uh, water hyacinth. There's there's all kinds of threats out there that ha are really going to have going to change the our fish fish populations and uh, and that's the number one thing I think that we have to deal with and we don't deal with it very much because you know. Spending money like that just takes you maybe back to where you were. Uh, Louisiana spends $9, $9 million a year uh, on vegetation control in, in their state. So, and, and you don't get something new. You don't get something better. You, you hope to get back to where you were, and really you don't usually do that. And then there's zebra mussels, and everybody knows about them, and different kinds of parasites, you know, uh, uh, Things that come out of aquariums, different kinds of snails that are out there that change the change the environment and and uh, interfere with other species. We had a uh, somebody call up that wanted to raise red claw uh, crayfish, which is a South is a Australian and maybe New Zealand crayfish that gets real big, you know, and they think it'd be a good to market. But wherever they've gotten loose, they've totally wiped out the native species, and we've got those other kinds of crayfish coming our way too. So there are, that's a big issue we're going to have to deal with. And I'd, I'd kind of like to follow up and ask each of you all to comment on that. What do you think the big, the number one issue is in fisheries or aquaculture right now, whichever is your perspective? Well, I'll speak more for, for aquaculture. They'll speak more for natural fisheries. I think one of the biggest issues that our U.S. aquaculture industry is facing is that the number of regulations that are imposed on them is going up every every year. It's dramatically increasing their costs. They're, in many cases, there are good reasons for the regulations, but they do have these host of imports that are that are coming in that are coming in at a lower cost because these other countries don't have the same kind of environmental regulations and the same kind of food safety regulations. So that's one of the, the big issues. High feed prices right now are, are a huge issue. Those high feed prices have to do a lot with our, our subsidies for ethanol production that attracted corn and decreased soybean acres. So price of soybeans went up, and then the economy being what it is, people started speculating in soybeans and oil and further drove the prices up. So high feed prices is a big issue. These fish diseases and fish health issues are, are very much an issue as well and in trying to prevent the spread of, of these diseases and the introduction of things like VHS is something that our industry in Arkansas is very, very concerned with. So I think those would probably be the, the top three from an aquaculture perspective. What about you, John? Well, it's, it's an interesting question in that over the past oh, almost a year now, I've been uh, participating on this team of uh, review team looking at an uh, environmental protection agency document for for some public works projects and and one of the things that we're supposed to get we're supposed to evaluate and give some suggestions on these projects from a scientific perspective these these um, public agencies want are, are trying to you know um, 
do something that is going to benefit local land owners, farmers, um, and they're trying to minimize environmental impacts and they're trying to mitigate for those losses that can't be adjusted. But the challenge is, is we don't have the scientific knowledge of really how, how to identify those impacts, how to evaluate them, how to mitigate them, because our scientific uh, understanding may not be sophisticated enough to do those. Yet these these activities, these projects are going to going to take place. So maybe from my perspective, just um, kind of a lack of uh, some big holes and some understanding of of the ecology of some of the fisheries issues um, is is an issue from from a kind of a researcher's perspective. 